Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So find the interval of convergence for this series. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this one, you, you don't always have to use the ratio test. You can use the uh, the root test. Because if, if you look at this, if you can somehow rewrite this in, in this form, something to the power of n. So when, when, you, uh, when you take the root test, you would take the nth root of this. So the nth root of this would be this. So these two will, these two will cancel out, leaving you with just a bubble. So the trick is to rewrite this as, as something to the power of n, and then take the nth root later on. Uh, because the, the reason why you, you can easily write this as something to the power of n is because of this. This is to the power of n, this is to the power of n, this is to the power of n. So you should have a hunch that you should be able to rewrite this as something to the power of n. So let, let's, let's try and do this. So with the, um, so we're going to use the root test. So our aim is to try and rewrite this as, uh, as something, as something to the power of n. That, that, that's our aim. So you start with this, you start with this, and if you look at this thing here, you've got one thing multiplying with another thing. So if, if I were to give you this, uh, you, you would do n, uh, n, you would do this, that would then give you this. So I've given you this, so try and work backwards to get to this stage here. So looking at this, looking at this, uh, this is to the power of n, this is to the power of n. So you can just simply get this times n, you can simply, you can just simply get this times n and then to the power of n. Because if I were to give you one thing multiplying another thing, you would just simply get this times this, well, to the power here, and this to the power here. That would then give you this. Well, anyway, from here, that would then take you to here. And then the same idea here. If you have one thing divided by, this is to the power of n to the power of n. So, um, so, so you can rewrite this as this. So the point here is that from here, from here, you can just simply get this divided by this, which is this divided by this to the power of n. So that would then take you to here. Okay, so now now you've got something to the power of n. So you can easily take the uh, the nth root. So with the nth root, uh, we 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 n normally with the nth root, you 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 um you, you demand that so all the un uh, all the uns or 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 above or equal to zero. Or another way of looking at it is you um you can you can take the absolute here, and, and we've we've done this many times in the past, so I'm expecting you to understand this. So um so either either you demand uh all the ans to be um, above or equal to zero, or you can just take or, or another way of looking at the same thing is to take the absolute of the whole thing. So we so starting with this. We, we are going to take the, uh, the nth root. We are going to use the root test and take the nth root. So with the root test, we always need to compute this value here, absolute here. So, uh, so now, now, uh, now take the nth root. So this is us taking the nth root here. Take the nth root of this whole thing here. And remember, we, we need the apps here. So, uh, so the nth root of something to the power of n, that will then just give you this. So now, um, now group all the ends together. Group all the ends together, uh, and then and then from here, remember apps of a b. That's the same as apps of a uh, times apps of b. So uh, so that will then give you this. And remember, our uh, n is moving from n is moving from uh, from zero to infinity. Uh, so n is always positive. So, so when you, when you take the absolute of something that's always positive, it's, this absolute is useless. It's, um, uh, because n is always positive. So you can, you can uh, ignore the absolute here. That will then give you this. Okay. So, so hang on. So remember, we are currently here at the moment. So going back to here, remember when it comes to the, when it comes to the root test, we always need to compute this value here. Well, if this value here is less than one, then, then we know it's going to converge. If it equals one, then it's inconclusive. So, so, so for convergence, we require this to be, to be less than one. We require this to be less than one. So going back to where we were before, going back to where we were before, it, in order for it to converge, we, we require this to be less than one. Um, well, as n tends to infinity, we know that this thing is going to head towards one. 
So, uh, so for, for, for this whole thing here to be less than 1, we just need to require this to be less than 1. Because this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, so we just require this to be, to be less than 1. So, for convergence, for convergence, we require this bit to be less than 1. That's all we require. If, if this bit here is less than 1, then the whole thing here, a sentence infinity, would be less than 1. So, uh, so try and make this to be less than 1. So that would take us to here. And then translate this from here, rewrite as this. You can always, you can always translate this as this. So now add 1 to, uh, to everything. So uh, add 1, that would then give you this. So that would then take us to here. So the, uh, the radius of convergence here is, the radius of convergence here is 1. And, and, and anything in this interval here, we know for sure, uh, is going to converge. But remember, with the, um, with the root test, that, uh, with the root test, hang on, remember back to here, uh, if, if this whole thing here is less than 1, we know it's going to converge. If, it, if it's greater than 1, we know it's going to diverge, but we don't really care about the, the diverge case. Um, um, remember, if this thing here is equal to 1, then it's, uh, it's inconclusive. So, hang on. So, you see, if you put a 0 or a 2 into this thing here, uh, then, then the whole thing here will equal 1. And when it equals 1, it's inconclusive. So we need to manually check what happens when it's dead on zero and dead on dead on two. Because going back to here, hang on, let me just repeat myself. Uh, going back to here, if it's less than one, it's going to converge. But then if it's equal to to one, then it's inconclusive. So we need to um, to uh, to manually check what uh, we we need to manually check the cases where this thing here equals precisely one, which we will do in the next video.